Hey everyone, it's AC here, got Jay Christie, MC University Pod, of course, and everybody knows me as the wash dad on the show, I, I, and I've been pushing hashtag washed agenda for the longest, and I figure at some point we have to talk to somebody, somebody in the MCU who can be, provide that extra knowledge and that teaching and there's nobody better than one mohan kapoor aka yusuf khan just finished his run on miss marvel yusuf welcome to the program we are happy to have you thank you anthony thank you jake such a pleasure thank you for having me of course and listen there's uh, there's a lot of important questions that we have to get to a lot that we have to ask but the most important question on my mind at this moment is this one. In episode three of Miss Marvel, there's a point where you go visit Bruno at his deli and you get a fruit pie snack. And, and of course you say that, you know, you're trying to hide the fact that you're having this snack and it's a little bit of a cheat snack. So I got to ask Mohan, what is your cheat snack of choice if you're just it, it, say if it's your it's your craving it's something that you may want okay so uh two things one uh, uh i'll never hide it from anybody because if i'm mm -hmm. gonna have it i'm gonna have it right? there you go yeah and i have plenty okay so i have um donuts mm -hmm. kinds yes i have uh um hostess twinkies mm-hmm have um, the cream pies, mm -hmm. and, uh, anything that's uh, unhealthy. Yeah. Hey, shout out to that. Like for me, payday, um, I oh. will, Reese's peanut butter cups, woo, when those things are rolling, they're rolling. Mm -hmm. And um, and and I say a good Snickers bar, because that, that oh, almond, yeah, yeah that's-, I got, that's I, got a I got a box in my cupboard right now. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's that's a problem. You can't have, in my opinion, with things like that, I can't have them in the house. I have to like, it has to be something I have to buy because like I have to have to put on shoes. Because if I put on shoes, I have another step of thinking. But if it's in the house, then it's too easy. Right. <laughs> right. No, yeah. but, but Mohan, you have to understand that Anthony is in his mid thirties, and he, but he all he talks about is how old he feels, and I can't uh, emphasize enough how seen he felt with your character, just as like a dad who's just like trying to relate, who's feeling a little bit behind, and so I, I was, I, and I really loved the dynamic you had in the show, particularly you know you and Maniba, um, Zenobia, and. Uh, I think a thing that felt universal about it, because obviously so many people have talked about how representative the show was. And I think that's something that's so important with anything that's uh, representative is to find what's universal to everyone. And I think that a lot of people, myself especially, related to kind of not necessarily the good cop, bad cop thing, because it's not that simple ever, but the different, the unspoken different ways that each of you parented in the show. And I'm curious how you thought about that, how you thought about like where that came from, why she felt one way or the other. Like what was the conversations you had about making that dynamic feel real? A couple of things to that, Jake. One, uh, we started shooting this in um, November, 2020, which was the height of COVID world mm -hmm. over the US was raging too. So we never really got to get out the bio bubble, so to speak, that Marvel had so uh, brilliantly created for us. We would get tested every alternate day. Anyone who was around us, directors, hair and makeup, sound engineers, anyone, all get tested every alternate day. So we never really got a chance to step out, have a meal together, go grab a coffee outside of the shoot space. And uh, even in the shoot space, when we were not on camera, we'd have our masks on. So, you know, there were times then, only till very recently, um, I started seeing people in the US without their masks. And initially I was like, hello, and they said, hey, Mohan, it's me. And I said, oh, you look different without a mask. <laughs> you know, and um, so, yeah, so we never really got to know each other. But I have to, and I always will give credit to the script. Mm -hmm. I always say that our script did 85% of all of us actors' jobs. The next uh, credit I give to is our casting director. Okay. Because they just found us all who just kind of gelled so organically bio bubble notwithstanding. And I think the magic of that was the, the, um, the ethnicity that we all came from, uh, the region that we came from. Uh, so I, I, I come from India. 
uh, India, Pakistan, and the Muslims, we share a similar, uh, you know, ethos and uh, belief system, and and we celebrate each other's uh, religious festivals and our, you know, wedding ceremonies are all pretty much the same. Uh, there's Zenobia Shaw playing Muniba Khan, my lovely wife. Uh, she's from Bombay, the same city I belong to, but she's been in New York for the past 30 odd years. So she's well aware of uh, uh, situations that we that were demanded of us as characters. Uh, there is uh, Amir Sheikh who uh, plays uh, the elder son. Sorry, Sagar Sheikh plays Amir Khan, the elder son, and brother to uh, Kamala Khan. Now he is uh, a Pakistani born in America, so he is actually a second generation uh, uh, Muslim in in America. Uh, Kamala, played by Iman so brilliantly, she's uh, a Pakistani Muslim born brought up in uh, Canada. So just you know, it, it, it were like gems coming together. They could easily understand the uh, second generation, uh, whatever the dynamics that the script demanded of us. So. Honestly, Muniba and I really didn't discuss it. I mean, because we just kind of, I mean, it sounds strange when we think about it, you know, amongst us as post-mortem. When we think about it, we say, really, man, that was magic. How did that happen? But it's just because we know where we're coming from and the script gave us the fodder. So it, we just kind of segued into it very, very easily. It's actually as simple as that. Interesting. You 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 mentioned something interesting about the casting process. What? How were you particularly found, and how did how did that happen for you to be on this project? So I have a talent manager uh, based in LA, and uh, she was shooting. Uh, she's also an independent producer, and she was shooting a film in India, uh, for which I was cast again as a father, um, a rich industrialist, son's wedding. So this American family comes down to India. Then it's the story of how the American girl uh, falls in love with the choreographer of um, uh, my uh, of the wedding ceremony that's being held because India, as you must have seen in Miss Marvel, you know, it's a big song and dance uh, mm -hmm. extravaganza that we do. So um, it was being directed, helmed by, uh, that time he was the debut director, Dwayne Adler, who was the uh, person who conceived and uh, brought up the Step Up dance films. So he was directing that. And um, so I played the father and both my manager and Dwayne, they both turned around and said that, hey, listen, you're brilliant. What are you doing in India? Come to Hollywood. Now, this was about five, six years ago. I said, what? I said, there's so much incredible talent out there whom I kind of look up to. I'm never going to make it there. You know, I'm kind of just about making ends meet here in uh, Bombay, India, the land of Bollywood. You know, so they say, no, no, listen, we seriously mean it because, you know, your age, your, your physicality, your your voice, your, your diction, all these things will work in Hollywood. Uh, I mean, albeit it may be representative characters that you might play, but uh, you will work. So I said, what do I have to do? So after much cajoling, they said that, so she said that, okay, I'll represent you. So we signed on. So she's been sending me scripts through the years and uh, I've just been one lazy sod, you know, I have not kind of really worked on putting my stuff together. And she was shocked that, you know, I've been working for 30 years. I. Till Miss Marvel, I didn't have a headshot. Oh, wow. <laughs> Till Miss wow. Marvel, I never had a showreel. Till Miss mm. Marvel, I didn't know the existence of something called IMDB. And she was like shocked. She's saying, how have you even been in the business for 30 years? I said, maybe ignorance works for me. <laughs> you know, if I I'm knew it, I'd get all frazzled about doing it well. If anything, if anything, Mohana, I would say again, this is I, I feel like we're brothers. I feel like we identify. This is something that I, I, I me yes. with technology and me with things like that, that's that fits into uh, the whole wash mold. So I'm with you, man. Continue, yeah. Jake. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say, I think that all of that stuff really does kind of inform the character. And I think that uh, I, I'm, I was kind of shocked when I learned that this was your first major Hollywood production because it really does feel like you, you know, you completely fit. It, it just, I don't know. It really, if you had asked me in this, which of the parents was someone who was the, just coming over for the first American production, I would have been like, I don't know. It's a coin flip. You guys are really both uh, so perfect. Um, and uh, a question I had, because this is like a very, and, I, if, and you talk about how you don't think about, you, maybe you are benefited from not thinking about stuff. And so maybe you just did not cross your mind at all, but you have the pleasure and perhaps anxiety inducing moment of having to deliver the titular line of the show. You are the one who says our Miss Marvel. And I'm curious, wow. like how much was there like a lot of like discussion of how that would go or did they kind of know that you wouldn't want to get in your own head about it? So, or was it just kind of, you just went on the day and you just said it and it was nothing. 
you know, uh, I don't know whether I should pack my back or I should give credit <laughs> to my directors and the creators, Sana, because, you know, every now and then, because I, I, see, here's the thing, I'm, not, I'm not nervous because I think, I think I know my craft. Mm-hmm. I believe in the script. I follow that like the Bible, including, you know, when they say something and they go dot, dot, dot. I know that that means a pause. And for me, mm-hmm. that's, beautiful. I will follow that, you know, where there is a need to improvise. So on table reads, we kind of go through that. We discuss our things and, you know, I say, can I add this or can I do that? And very often the, mm-hmm. you know, the kind of little garnishing, as I call it, mm-hmm. the garnishing of, ya Allah, beta, ya khuda, you know, all those kind of things. Mm-hmm. I say, can I add that? They say, yes, yes, please do. It just kind of, you know, gives it that whole cultural thing, adds to it and all that. So that was all we discussed. And um, so they've never, ever told me how to do the line. I would go to Sana sometimes and I would, because if it was an important scene, like um, the scene in the mosque mm-hmm. where Amir is getting married and I go and tell him this. So after that scene got over, I went to uh, Sana and I said that, uh, was that all right? Um, so she's saying, Mohan, please don't even ask me about all these things. She's saying, because what you have done with my Yusuf, she said, I cannot imagine you've taken it to another level. So I've never really asked about it. If I've ever felt a little doubtful, in fact, the funny thing is I used to ask all the youngsters. Okay? <laughs> I used to ask Iman, I used to ask Amir, I used to ask Bruno, and I used to ask them, hey, was that scene all right? Did I do it all right? And initially they just said, yeah, yeah, that was cool. After a few uh, you know, more, uh, occasions, uh, I don't remember who it was, I think it was Iman. She said, why are you even asking? So I said, listen, I come from an Indian paradigm of acting, performing, emoting, and all those things. I said, this is Marvel. First thing is Hollywood, then this is Marvel. It's not the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's a global cinematic universe. Yeah. You know, it's right. So I need to know if the, the syntax, the paradigms are right in terms of my mm-hmm. craft and performance. And then she said something that I've always believed. If your director doesn't ask you for another, take or if she does not tell you what was wrong she's saying you've got it mm-hmm. you've nailed it. so i said ah yes so when she reminded me of that then i even stopped asking and i never i never go back to the uh, the view monitors and see the day yeah. how it was and things like that because i just feel if i see myself i'll throw up or something so i never do that so that last scene where i turn around and i tell her that you were always our little miss marvel when i read that scene i remember i just knew how i want to punch it I just knew where to drag the line, where to take that dot pause and how to, when to turn and do. So it sounds all very choreographed and rehearsed, but Mm -hmm. it's absolutely not because that came from the heart. And trust me, my hair is standing on even now when I'm talking Mm -hmm. about it because I just knew that would happen. And it happened to me when I was performing. So we're sitting over there and I turn and look at her and when I said it, the hair stood on end, you know, and um, I knew we which later we added, you know, the words magic, absolutely magic. So I knew we had magic. In that. Yeah. I don't think you could have put that any better. You mentioned the scene in the mosque in episode three with Amir. And I remember I even tweeted you the day of the episode after I saw it, because the line, the man who chooses family is never alone. Yeah. I think it's one thing to put that in the script, but it's also another to deliver it with, because there, there's a there's an essence of you don't have to overact this. There's an understatedness with which you deliver it, which I, I said to you at the time. But I now that I'm face to face with you, I could say it again. Like it was just a beautiful, uh, such a well done scene. Uh, it was it, it was amazing and really inspiring as a father myself to to my three year old son. So I, you just think of the future and you think of it, uh, instances like that. So it meant a lot to me too. So uh, tremendous job on that on that part for you. Thank you. And so, uh, so I wanted to continue because you mentioned the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I think one of the things that is always talked about in media and in circles is how, how kind of strict they are with NDAs and not giving up stuff. How was that part for you? Was there anything that took you by surprise or was it just standard like anything else? Uh, so my uh, the beginning of my career in media was uh, I was an advertising executive here in Bombay. And we always had NDAs with our mm-hmm. talent, you know, the models and all those guys. So it was not a concept that was alien to me. And honestly, very often, you know, I, I, uh, I mean, of course I sign it. But I kind of always question myself that, I mean, does one actually need a document? And 
aren't yeah. the professional people sensible enough to understand that they shouldn't talk about it? <laughs> I mean, people are investing time, money, energies to you know get this out without the world getting to know about it before it. And it's, uh, it, I mean, and well, people, I'm not saying they do it on purpose, but there are some people, you know, inadvertently it just comes up, you know, mm -hmm. or they might just tell somebody who inadvertently tells somebody who tells yeah. somebody and then it's out. So I guess they need that uh, legality attached to it. But um, no, it didn't come as a surprise. And it's something that I would insist that, you know, people mm -hmm. start taking seriously because there's a lot riding on, I mean, it's not just Marvel, anybody. You know, it's, it's a short yeah. film, it's a festival film. It's anything. You, you should have that uh, sense of propriety about yourself, about that, you know, you're working for somebody. Would you go tell them? Would you go tell somebody about what's going on between you and your wife? Why? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? You put an NDA there. Why do you do it? Because it's personal, you know, this is professional. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have invested a lot, you know, not just uh, money, but it's a lot of their talent. And here you go and just kind of squander it off. No, I disagree that I'm very pernickety about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that you said it best. Uh... And I think uh, I don't think that Kevin Feige is going to stop sending out NDAs anytime soon. But I think that he de you definitely uh, put it right. And you know, you talked about how you've been in the business for thirty years. And I think one of the most interesting things about the show um, that con continues to astound me is that this is Amon Valani's first professional acting job. Um, and it's and, and especially given that she said she had no intentions of going into acting, and you see her on screen for one minute, and you're like, if you went into anything else, it would be a crime against humanity. Like, what? <laughs> you have your face is perfect for the screen. You have the charisma of like a thousand people. And so, how? And obviously, you know, there's always like kind of advice given just through you know action and performance. But how um, did you, as someone who's been working, you know, as just a working actor for 30 years, um, did you do anything to set an example or put her at ease or how, and, and how did it feel to, you know, kind of see a star being born in front of your eyes? I'm saying the last thing. Yes. Okay, yeah. First table, <laughs> first table read, episode one. So there are portions that I wasn't uh, reading, right? So I would just keep looking at everybody who's reading. And Iman obviously had the most lines. And I would just keep looking at her. And towards the end of the episode, I was like gobsmacked. I was literally... <laughs> and the minute they said, see, I, you know, it just came so naturally because I was so immersed in her performance and her delivery. And this was the first time. I just jumped up and I started clapping and everyone was, what happened to this man? <laughs> <laughs> we barely got to know each other and I just said, oh my God, I said, and it came out there the first time. I said, beta, which means my child. I said that you were born to be Kamala Khan. Yeah. I said, you are, and then I looked at Sana Amanat and I just said, you have found Kamala. This girl is going to be a star. The world is going to see this girl in a different light. And I didn't know about this the first time, nothing. And now the whole world is talking about it, that she's, she was born to play Kamala. And um, so, um, so honestly, there was nothing that I could say to her. I mean, I told you that I would ask her that, you know, how did I do this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, That's she was so right. <laughs> there was just, she was just so commensurate. And, but yes, I must say that the growth of hers from day one, I think it was, 6th November, from 6th November till we ended season one. And then again on the uh, on the red carpet and in LA, I have seen this girl, uh, this girl, you know, just metamorphosize into this absolute brilliant, brilliant actor and human being. And I just wish her so much luck. I'm just so fortunate that I got a chance to share screen space with her and give her her moniker of Miss uh, Marvel. Yes. So yes. It's fabulous. She's just so amazing. So I don't know what, uh, if she's gone through any training or something, but here's the other thing. The reason, there are more reasons to Iman being saying that you were born to play Kamala because Iman is actually Kamala. She mm -hmm. is that kind of a Marvel fan freak. You know? She is, her whole life is about Marvel at some point. So for her to segue and slip into Kamala's role was, I think it was cakewalk and we must understand that she is a very, very, very astutely brilliant young girl. She's very brilliant. And I also believe that, you know, all great actors are very, very astutely intelligent people. Mm -hmm. you know, because for them to understand emotions, to understand script, to understand the syntax of cinema or whatever, you know, medium you're doing, you've got to be astutely intelligent. And mm -hmm. she, that's why you can, you know, you're seeing how she is. She's just amazing. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think, well, speaking to not only that, but I think the show itself, because I found myself after the show concluded thinking that the MCU specifically in phase four has tried to tell a lot of different stories. Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier talking about the the aspect of race with Black people. Uh, Shang-Chi introducing that element of culture. And I found Miss Marvel, you guys as a whole, as a unit, like overall, just the way that you told your story, the element of the partition in episode five, which I think as far as Disney is concerned, this is something that we have not seen before in terms of the the depth of story, the care to the, the caretaking of that and just telling a story of your culture. So I would ask, how do you feel about how this came out overall and the message and the story that came out of it? Because I think what people were left with, including myself, was just a really good feeling about how you can have different cultures, but then at the same time, understand that they go through the same things that we do as as other people as well. So what did you think about that overall? So again, I hop back to the writing. It's some brilliant writing, how they've just encompassed it all, you know. So people say, you know, it's a superhero story. I, I do think it's essentially a superhero story. I think it's the story of an immigrant family in the US mm -hmm. and it's their culture, their ethnicity, the growing dynamics of teenagers. It's the parents, how they interact with each other and their children. It's about holding on to values and trying to, you know, pass that on to their children. And uh, somewhere in the middle of all this, the youngest girl, she gets uh, superpowers. So to tell a story like this, it required a very, um, we have a very diverse uh, cast and crew, you know, behind mm -hmm. the scenes also. There was yeah. a lot of representation, as we all know. So to... To, you cannot say the story of a Pakistani immigrant family without talking about the partition. Mm -hmm. Because like you have the Holocaust, you have so many other stories. You know, This South Asian, which is such a huge subcontinent, you know, the whole Indian subcontinent, 47 when the partition happened, hardly anybody knows about it. Hardly mm -hmm. anybody. And this, it, tons of stories that Amir, uh, there is a line, he thinks that, Every uh, Pakistani family has a story about the partition, and none of them are good. Mm -hmm. And similarly, there's an Indian side too. There's a, there are horror stories. You know, millions of people were butchered, and you know this story yeah. needs to be told. Albeit these these guys have done it in you know in the in the realm of the parameters of the, the story that is required, and they did a fabulous, stellar job telling that. But uh, yeah, the the story of partition should be told separately, perhaps. You know, it should yeah. be told separately, and mm -hmm. for us. Coming from the region that we're coming in, there was so much relatability. You know? and we, I mean, being an Indian, you know, I, mm -hmm. I could understand what uh, Amir is saying, even though he he has not been through it because he's an American. Mm -hmm. I have not right. personally been through it, but you know, I know of relatives who've been through that. I know of friends, mm -hmm. parents who've been through that, and it's horrific. So, for Marvel, I mean, look at Marvel, all their superheroes. You got an Iron Man, you got a Green Man, you got a Thor. Mm -hmm. you got this. <laughs> this is a real family. It's tangible. Yeah. The tapestry of culture, the tapestry of colors and everything is so real. And in that you say, okay, so there's a superhero. There you go. Mm -hmm. so a lot of people may have wondered what's going on. Why is Marvel making this? But they opened a floodgate now. Can you imagine the world at large thinking if they mm -hmm. could do it? There's so many stories from our region that can be told, which will appeal yeah. to a wider audience. So I think it's uh, it's a tremendous job that they've done. And I'm grateful as a, as, a, as a South Asian, I'm grateful that they did it because it's time that our stories are told. And it's not just the horror stories that need to be told. There's no. so many other wonderful stories that can be told. Oh, it's the beauty of the culture. Yeah. I think yeah. going to Karachi and all that stuff was just mm -hmm. tremendous to see all there, of it. There's just, uh, there's just little things. And I, and I think that like, wow, you know, I think that there needs to be a lot more stuff in, you know, mainstream culture that is specifically focused on partition. Cause it's one of those things where like, I truly did never, didn't really hear anything about it until college, which is like, that would be insane if it was, you know, another mass scale disaster, you know, if it happened in Europe, I would have heard about it in like second grade, which is, you know, the problem with America's education in a lot of ways. But I yeah. think that there is such a value to 
introducing these types of stories in mass entertainment where because like if you were to release like an art movie about the partition that might be very well made you know a handful of people are going to see it but everyone watches the marvel universe and this it makes people ask questions and now we're aware of it and so i thought that it was just really well done and that it wasn't just like a side thing it wasn't like a side plot it was yeah, interwoven it, in the plot it's not just yeah. like a thing that was referenced like oh the partition yada 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 google it no you were in it i thought that that was so well done um but the last thing that i want to ask is that you know there's been a lot of talk and i'm not going to ask if there is one uh but about like a possible season two or anything like that and i think that first and foremost the guest star that i think everyone would want is bon jovi he has to appear as himself obviously <laughs> but <laughs> is there anyone as you know as someone who had the pleasure yourself of coming over and working in the Marvel universe. Is there any actor or actress working in Bollywood or in South Asia generally that you would love to see come on and, you know, be a part in a possible season two of Miss Marvel? Well, one of my favorites has already come for Akhtar. Yeah. I love mm -hmm. him. I love him because he's also a filmmaker and he makes some astounding stuff. So I, I hope that, uh, you know, season two, his character is revived because Marvel can do anything. They can, so, you mm -hmm. know, so I just hope he comes back because he can add so much more to it. And um, yeah, there are, there, there are quite a few, there are quite a few, but uh, it all depends on how they, if there is a season two and how they write it, then you can start thinking, oh, so there is this character. Hmm, why don't that guy would be really good? Because yeah. I know the actor, so I can say that, ah, that guy would be really good. So I remember we were shooting and on set and there was somebody else was shooting and uh, Sana came and told Zenobia and me saying that, hey, I just want to tell you guys, we just uh, confirmed um, Farhan Akhtar and Fawad Khan for two principal characters. <laughs> I screamed at that. What? <laughs> Who's screaming at who? God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> who are such huge names, you know? There's yeah. such huge names for this uh, subcontinent. Fawad for Pakistan and mm -hmm. Farhan for India. And let's not forget Mehbish Haya. She yeah. also a huge star in Pakistan. So. I thought, and, and the others also, the others also, the, the elder characters in Karachi, they're also huge stars over there. So mm -hmm. I, I guess if we know when there is a season two and if we get privy to a basic storyline, then yeah. one could start thinking, mm, mm -hmm. this could be done by so-and-so, this could be done. Yeah. Because there are some amazing senior actors and who, who mm -hmm. made a foray into Hollywood prior to me, you know, uh, unfortunately, some of them are no more Ompuri, Irfan Khan, who was in Life of Pi and... Yeah. Rani in the Jurassic World of the mm -hmm. project. And um, then there's Nasiruddin Shah, you know, another fabulous, fabulous actor. So senior actors, we've got a, a, a tons of them. And among the younger ones, we've got so many. Yeah. So they're all still doing so much fabulous stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, 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 I think everyone should. And why only from India? You know? Even Pakistan. Oh, so well, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, the whole subcontinent get yeah. involved i think because I, I think that that's something that was really special too about the partition episode is that um because we had a guest on for that episode that was um you know pakistani so she was talking about how because you know to be frank i wasn't familiar with either of the lead actors of it because you know i uh, don't have a big knowledge of that but she's like oh this is like the biggest deal in the world and like the fact that these people are being introduced uh to american audiences and i mean i personally kept stop couldn't stop being like wow this might be the most good looking couple I've ever seen on screen before, you know, and he's just like, Oh, I want to see this for what kind of, when can he be in every movie ever now? I want to see him again. So I think it's such a great opportunity to introduce. I mean, there's billions of people in the subcontinent. You might as well bring over some of them uh, to be in big movies over here. Yeah, I remember all my female friends saying, did you meet for what country? I said, Hey, I'm all in it, okay? I'm also in it. Come on, let's talk about it. <laughs> what about Mohan Kapoor, huh? <laughs> Oh, oh my good my goodness mohan it has been a yes. pleasure and an honor to speak to you i want to say this the, the the next time and i hope there's a next time that we do talk to you we're gonna have to deep dive on this uh this this candy and unhealthy foods thing i, I want to do <laughs> yeah i want to do should, a whole when I, when I come stateside maybe we should meet up you get your yeah. candy, I get my candy. Let's yep. Yes. Right. Yeah. I yes. love it. Exactly. And get a table and like you exchange and like just do, you know, and, and people like a click on it. And it's like, this was a half hour long and they didn't talk about Miss Marvel. It's like, yep, just candy. Who cares? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> That's... I, remember, I remember the last day of shooting, there was this long table and they laid out these massive boxes of assorted donuts. 
And I was like, oh, this Imran, please, you've got two more shots to do. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, quickly. So I had one quickly, then I looked and said, what is the next one? Then I saw somebody else picking something that I had to consider. I said, how's that? How's that? They think, that's good, but this has got a little bit less of this and this is vegan. I said, forget vegan, give me the, the, the uh-huh. wrong stuff. Yeah. I went through six of those donuts. Six. It happens. It happens. And then you, it, it feels like you blacked out. You know, like it feels like you're the Hulk waking up. You're like, what happened? I just. I, thankfully, I, thankfully, my last two shots, I was just meant to look into the sky and just go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I said, okay, wake me up when I'm done, when I hear cut. <laughs> Listen, this I literally is- had black coffee on the side. So what did yep. I go to <laughs> I was completely uh, I, I could think of a million ways to end this interview, but this yeah. was as good of a yes. way to do it. Moha Kapoor, Yusuf Khan, Miss Marvel streaming on Disney Plus. I'm sure we will see him again very soon mm-hmm. in the MCU. It has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Jake. Thank you so much for having me for all of us, all of you wonderful people watching. Please pray that I come and uh, do some more great work for y'all. Thank you so much.